Welcome back to episode six of the Deep Drive in the Left Field podcast. My name is Jack. I'm uh, otherwise known as MLB Nerds on Instagram, and I'm here with my co-host Ryan Garcia, otherwise known as Ryan Garcia ESM on Twitter. Today we're going to be talking about a few things. Uh, should MLB introduce a salary cap floor? Um, the Mets trade rumors, could they go get another third baseman in their starting pitcher? We'll be all, all of us, including the two producers, Jackson Del Rosario and James Valentinus, will be giving our top 10 third baseman. And we'll be going over ratios and trivia, the usual stuff. Let's get into it. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. Getting it started with the salary cap floor argument, this is this has been a thing, a common theme throughout uh, pretty much all of baseball. I, I want to say like the last few years, it's been sort of an argument. Should MLB have a salary cap? Should have a floor? Just because small market teams refuse to spend. And this is actually something that I have a post on for MLB Nerds Instagram. Go follow if you already done. I'm pretty sure you already do though. Likely coming from there. Um, if you, uh, yeah, it's going to be out tonight. You'll probably see this later. You've already seen the post probably. But my thoughts are that we should have a salary floor. And I've heard arguments like we should have the salary floor depending on the market. But at the end of the day, um, uh, at the end of the day, teams are going to, uh, the, the big market teams are going to spend 170 plus to $200 million per, per season. Even if they don't hit the luxury tax, sell $200 million a lot. The problem is teams like the Tampa Bay Rays who are spending what, like $35 million, $40 million a season. It, the, the, the problem is, you know, they, they're striking out on free agents because they're not willing to spend anything. They're not completely, I don't want to say Tampa's like that, but I know Oakland's not the biggest destination for, uh, for uh, free agents just because, you know, the market and the, and the tax. Florida would be a bit more, um, I, uh, probably a bigger destination because of the state tax, but it depends on the player. Um, but uh, like I was saying, though, I, I, there should be a salary floor for me. Just it doesn't allow owners to be cheap who can spend because every fucking owner can spend over $65 million on their team. They're, they're all billionaires. John Fisher, the Oakland A's, worth $2.7 billion. He spends nothing. It's been like this forever. It needs to change. Ryan, what are your thoughts? Uh, personally speaking, I think there needs to be some sort of a salary floor, something to just kind of boot out all these ter- like because then if you have a salary floor some owners are going to sell their teams most likely if they don't want to pay either a they're going to sell their teams or b actually start paying up to those salary floors and if we start putting pressure on horrible owners to actually be decent at what they're supposed to do because when you buy a franchise you're buying it with the hopes of uh, well when you're buying it the whole purpose of being an owner is to improve the situation to improve the uh quality of um team and to in, in uh improve the quality of enjoyment and improve the uh, likelihood of enjoying what the products on the field. If you're an owner and you're supposed to do that, that is your responsibility in my eyes, at least you're supposed to better the game of baseball on your team, whether it be through improving the stadium, whether it be through improving uh, what the facilities for the players, improving the quality of life for the players or improving the product on the field, you have some sort of responsibility to actually make the what's going on in your franchise better. And there are so many owners who haven't done that. Uh, one owner, one ownership, uh, one team with bad ownership as well. You didn't bring up the, the uh, Cleveland baseball team or Cleveland Indians. I, I don't know how we're going to refer to them here, but uh, they have terrible, terrible payroll issues. They do not spend a dime. I think their payroll is lower than Bowers eight, uh, 40 million this year. Uh, so that just goes to show how bad they are at spending money. They just shipped off Lindor. They shipped off uh, Carrasco. Uh, coming up soon, they're going to ship off J-Ram. They shipped off Bauer. They've shipped off Clevenger. They're just constantly shipping off players. And they've sold this idea of we can treat our fans as terribly as we want as we want, and trade as many superstars as possible. And there's no one holding us accountable uh, and stopping us from doing that. I want to talk about the Indians real quick because they've spent money in the past. Uh, and I think you're sounding a lot like Fuzzy. Fuzzy from YT on Twitter, Fuzzy on Twi- on, on YouTube, who I disagree with though. a lot. I, I think it's terrible that he's the the main guy that represents uh, the majority of the the MLB online community because he just does so so little research. When when he ever, when he you know he makes an argument, baseball argument, he does so little research. Research, excuse me, and it, it really paints a bad light on the community. I feel like from time to time, um, they they signed Edwin Arcanacion, and these are guys like like they've signed plenty of players. Uh, they just, they, they haven't signed similarly like, like to the, the Colorado Rockies. They're pretty similar in that the main guys that have made impacts for them are guys they've had for a while, like a la story, Arenado, not guys like Brian Shaw, Jake McGee, who I love Jake McGee. Now he was pretty ass with Colorado, but I think my biggest takeaway from the, this whole thing 
is also we shouldn't be celebrating teams like the Rays who spend so little money and make the World Series. Like, that's really cool that analytics are implemented in the game. And, you know, even like with their, you know, minuscule pay- payroll, they're still able to make the World Series with Charlie Morton to give almost half of it. But it's not a positive. Uh, it's really not a positive for the game. Because imagine if they, if they just increase their payroll by like $30 million, imagine how much better that team would be. And I just think that, at, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it, it, it's a real, it's a big problem and it needs to be fixed in the salary floor. Well, I mean, I think one point to be made here also is that, you know, it's really just a matter of like, I, I don't want to get too like technical here, but I mean, is it really okay that the Cle- that the Cleveland Indians traded away a starter uh, that had $12 million on his uh, contract? Yes. Uh, I think 12 so. million. I yeah. mean, no, no, I understand. No, no, I'm not saying that the, tr- that I, like, what they, well, with that being said, I mean, they're like, as currently constructed coming into the off season, could they have won the division? No, I don't you think don't so. think they could. No, no, not like right now. I mean, like coming into the off season, they could not have, I don't if know. They were, I, it, it depends on what they saw. Like if they were able to, if they kept all the boys and they went one, cause the odds are they're not going to be able to resound Lindor, obviously. And you know, that's pretty fair. No, I, no, I Lindor. Being, yeah. Lindor being traded. That's overweight. fine. I, I, wouldn't yeah, I think it should have got traded. 13, 10 million. I wouldn't give a 10-year deal. I, I wouldn't. I, I, right. It is what it is. Um, but do I think they could have made a run at the division? I mean, you got the Twins, you got the Royals, you got the Tigers, and the other team? White Sox? The other team? Yeah. Okay, and, the other team. I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think it would be pretty much – I think it would be pretty close. I think it really depends on uh, uh, if they could, like, sign on their back because their lineup was so atrocious last year. And, like I said, I didn't have a problem with the Indians whatsoever trading Lindor – and it's not like they got a terrible package for a guy that they didn't get a terrible package for a guy that that guy that's an expiring deal. They throw in Carrasco. I think they could have gotten a lot more for Carrasco if they put him in a separate deal. That's what made no sense to me. I I don't, I guess they really like Jimenez and Jimenez and Mets wouldn't do it unless they got Carrasco in the deal. Um, Well, so Jimenez is a good player. Like he's a good defensive player. No, no, don't get me wrong. He's good, but I just don't think, I think they could have gotten a lot more if they, they traded him separately. Like, Potentially the Yankees, you know, the Yankees could use a top 10 pitcher, top 11 pitcher top on a big contract. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, go ahead. I, what I was going to say was like Lindor, the Lindor trade made all the sense in the world. Like he, yeah, I was not like at that point, don't do that. Just go out and get one of the, if you would have had Jimenez and you think about it, Lindor didn't hit that well last year and they still were able to be a really good team. Despite the fact that Lindor was terrible. He was at a 100 weighted runs created plus or like 105, something like that. If Jimenez is like a 90 weighted runs created plus with good defense, it's not going to be as good as indoors. You're just, you're somewhat close to what you had there in 2020. Uh, but the issue is things like, why would you sign Eddie Rosario over Jock Peterson? What, like, what was the point of that? Like you didn't want to spend, you gave Eddie Rosario who literally can't was, play the field. Like that that's, that's the type of move that don't make sense to me. Why would you bring in Eddie Rosario? And like, it's just like incompetence. It's not a big thing. With but the that's my point. Guy. Given that Peterson was paid less, that's just incompetence. And I, I just, it is what it is. And I'll that also is part add of it. that Cleveland is not spending enough money on analytics. That's, that's part of it. Yeah, I agree about that. I, uh, but also Cleveland played the, the, the AL and NL Central, the two worst divisions in baseball probably last year. I mean, yeah, but they were like, they were one Brad Hand choke job away from going to a game three with the Yankees who went to a game five with the Rays and were one Aroldis Chapman choke job away from at least having a shot in the, to go to extra endings. I, I don't know. I, I still think also Bieber got like fucked up by the Yankees and he's still a good pitcher. Don't I'm not going to be one of those people that thinks no. that he's, he's bad because he <laughs> plays. Uh, Bieber got his shit stomped from. You're Wait, wait, can Ryan, you repeat your point? Your, your audio is messed up. R- Ryan, your yeah. internet is you like fiction autism. <laughs> oh, it's my weird. bad. Um, uh, I, I don't know why it's like, way. that's weird. Whatever. Um, I'll, I'll just pretty much conclude this part of the uh, the segment here. Um, Emily needs a salary floor. It's not good to celebrate teams that don't spend any money. The owner's got to go if they can't spend 65 plus mil. Getting into our next segment of today's podcast, we're going to be talking about uh, MLB PA rejecting MLB's offer uh, about whatever they wanted with the expanded playoffs in the 154 game season being pushed back a month and having a typical 162 game schedule, everything starting on time with no universal, you know, no universal DH with seven, uh, two, seven, uh, with the seven inning double header thing and all the other stuff we had last year besides universal DH. I'll just preface this with we all fucking hate no universal DH. Nobody likes that. It's, it's stupid. 
but you know, at the at the end of the day, um, we're gonna <laughs> excuse me. At the end of the day, it's a bargaining chip, and there's like a go. There's likely going to be a strike uh, in 2022, and we're gonna have a long delay, and they might not even be a fucking season. If I'm being honest, uh, because um, owners they they want to expand the playoffs, but they don't want to compensate the players for the extra games. But players don't mind if they're getting compensated for it. And the fans don't want to explain expand the playoffs because it's it's stupid. It, it takes away the value of a regular season. Regardless, Ryan, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, first off, um, I think it's just another example of the owners. Like they have, there's no accountability. Like they don't have to do anything to make the game any better. And those guys employ the commissioner, Manfred, who a lot of people dislike, uh, including myself. Um, and so, I mean, what what reason would the owners have to like make the game better? I mean, they don't have any reason to do it. They can make yeah, the gobs of money. They Dude, make all they have to do, money. yeah. They they, Manfred literally incentivizes being a horrible owner because you just make a crap ton of money and revenue, and you get like like lower market teams like the Rays and A's get so much money off of teams going over the luxury tax. Like it's you if you're a terrible owner, you're rich. You're just making like you're using like a team as like a side, uh, a, a side thing to get money from. It's so easy to in Major League Baseball, and then you can like be, and then you don't have to care about the sport because like I mean, why would you? Manfred's not really gonna do anything about it. And so, you know, universal DH, I mean, why would we want to see actual hitters? Why do we, I mean, we want us, obviously we want to see pitchers go up there, swing and miss, look like freaking eighth grade hitters up there. Uh, that's because Bartolo Colon hit a home run once in 2016. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. I want another to see reason uh, to pitchers hate hitting. Colon. There's so many yeah. reasons to hate Bartolo Colon, but there's another reason. Yeah. That's, uh, I don't, I don't really care. He incited this, Colon. this anti-universal DH movement by the people who like to see him hit. We, we're, we're gonna see Bartolo Colon come back and hit another home run yeah wow like I don't care like I really couldn't care about that one time like randomly in a season the pitcher hits a home run like Madison Bumgarner is regarded as one of the better hitting pitchers and he's horrendous at the plate like his weighted runs created plus he makes Tyler Wade look like Barry Bonds like it's it's I mean that's an exaggeration with Bumgarner but with like other pitchers like other pitchers are so bad at hitting like I'm pretty sure the average negative weighted runs created plus are pitchers in the negatives I'm like very confident on that so you're basically having an automatic out for any pitcher. Like imagine it's games. It's like, a, it's like a game seven, the NLCS. And uh, in the fifth inning, there's runners at the corners, two outs. And because the pitcher's dealing at the keep him in, he just strikes out. Like there's no, there's no drama there. There's no nothing. Hey, I mean, it sucks. This is just, this is just terrible. Bad for baseball. Terrible for the sport. It is what it is. Hopefully there's no strike, but there's going to be a strike likely. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's really not much else to say about this. Really, it it is. It sucks. We all know the owners are, are, we don't like the owners. We don't like Manfred. And the players are rightfully so declining their deal because they deserve to get paid for the amount of games they play, especially nationally televised playoff games. So I'm going to make this bad joke. No, I'm making this bad joke. If we're going to have a strike, Adam Ottavino can't be in it because he can't throw a strike. That's a terrible joke. I'm going to stop. I it's like a terrible joke that. because I have PTSD from Ottavino and – Bro, <laughs> Torrey and Buffalo. <laughs> you, that was the this greatest guy, joke job I've ever seen him. Outing, he can't throw strike. You know, Boston – Bro, yeah, have fun. no, have Boston's fun turning him to, like, the greatest reliever ever, and he's going back to, like, prime Colorado Ottavino. Well, prime Col- getting, uh, Colorado – And then he's going to get traded to the right. to the White Sox, and then he's going to, like, strike out Judge to end the ALCS in game six. It's no, going to be something crazy. Like, well, you said bro. it about, you said about uh, Schaefer, and he resigned with the Cubs, so. Bro, but you know, that, you know that would be, like, absolute – like, that's, like, out of your nightmares if something like that happened. If Ottavino went for My the White Sox – My nightmare is the White Sox. Sox. My nightmare would be Ottavino gets traded no. to the White Sox and, like, win Cy Young. <laughs> Cardinals White Sox World Series. You would like not you would like get so you I would not be able to the Cardinals as much as you think I do. I would Bro, like, you would have to deactivate or the Mets and the White Sox, you would deactivate probably. I don't even hate the Mets. I don't even nah, I don't think I, you I hate, the hate the Mets either. Let me guess. I Braves the Mets Braves the White Sox. Team that I, I genuinely despise is the White Sox. There's no other team. Other teams Braves, like fan base. Bro, I I don't like their fan base. <laughs> if I wasn't a Yankees fan, I would hope for a White Sox like Braves World Series just to see your reaction, but I can't like when the if maybe if like the Yankees have to tank in a few years, I would want that to happen just to see your reaction <laughs> like if they, you you if the white Sox be, win the world series this year i'm deactivating like you're never finding me on social media again i'll never like tweet ever uh you you can you i will like i'll go live in a desert or something i'll cut off my internet like you're never finding me on any social media platform ever again so our next time on today's podcast we're gonna be doing our third base top 10 list or top 10 third oh, yeah. base list. excuse me this is going to be including upside down james valentinus or oh, he's not upside down anymore 
uh, and Jackson Del Rosario, the two producers of this podcast. We'll do this like we had the we did the, the starting pitcher and right field list. All uh, we'll a real name at each spot, and then we'll uh, debate about it, and then we'll do a combined list. So at number ten, I have Yankees third baseman Gio Urshela. I have Eugenio Suarez. I don't know how to pronounce his first, first name for some reason. Eugenio. Eugenio. Yeah. Yeah, Eugenio. Eugenio. Yeah. Eugenio. Eugenio. Like, Eugenio. Hey, nice. I, I, chill. I chill. Like All right. I have I have Yankees third baseman Gio Urshela as well. I got Mr. Big Scoops, Rafi Devers. Wow, nice bias. Coming at number nine, I have Chicago Cubs third baseman Chris Bryant. That's also where I have Chris Bryant. Same here. I have Bryant at nine. Not Wait, bias. From the Cubs. I don't have it's from Chris the Mets. Bryant at nine. I got the other side of Chicago, Yuan Moncada. What the fuck is wrong with you? At number well, eight, I have <laughs> third baseman Josh Donaldson. I also have Josh Donaldson of the franchise who hasn't won a playoff game since I was born. I also have Josh Donaldson of the Minnesota Twins. I don't have Josh Johnson. I got Mr. Manny Machado. At number seven, I have San Diego, Slam Diego, annoying fan base Diego, Padres, third baseman, Manny Machado. I also have Manny Machado of the Fraudres. I also have Manny Machado of the Padres, who are going to beat the Dodgers this year. I have Mr. Bringer of Rain, Josh Donaldson. At number six, I have free agent, future brewer, third baseman, Justin Turner. Uh, I have future Somerset Patriot, Justin Turner, also at this spot. I have future national Justin Turner at this spot. I have future, I don't know, Justin Turner at this spot. At number five, I have newly acquired San Diego, San, San Diego, excuse me, St. Louis Cardinals third baseman, Nolan Arenado. Dax would kill me for this. I have no, Matt Chapman do it. at five. Um, no, 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 <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Move on. James, who do you have? I have Arenado okay. at five. Jackson, who do you have? I also have Mr. Nolan Arenado at right, five. There you go. Uh, at number four, I have Cleveland Indians third baseman, Jose Ramirez. I have uh, Jack's favorite third baseman, Nolan Arenado at four. I have uh, Matt Chapman at four. I have Mr. Matt Chapman at four. And number three, I have Oakland Athletics, future best third baseman, future Yankee, future top two player, or three, I don't know, depending on where you want to put Judge, uh, Athletics third baseman, uh, Matt Chapman. Uh, I'm the first person, I guess, in this segment talking without being on drugs. I have Jose Ramirez at third. I have top 10 player in baseball, Jose Ramirez at third. I don't have him top 10, but I do have Jose Ramirez at third as well. And number two, I have Houston Astros, not Trastros, not Cheaters, just the fucking Astros. Like, like, get just get over it, really. Houston Astros third baseman Alex Fragman at two. I have Anthony Rendon at two. I do too. I I got I I, I converted I converted Ryan to the Bregman is better than Rendon train. That's so sad. Yeah, I got Bregman too. And number one, I have New York Yankees third baseman Miguel Andujar. Who do you have, Ryan? I was going to say that. They hate you. I have Alex Bregman. You took my joke, bro. I have Alex Bregman at one as well. I, of course, have Anthony Rendon. Top five player in baseball. Yeah, I, I have he, I have him as a top five player in baseball, that too. That wasn't evident already. I Who, already Rendon? Rendon? Yeah, I have both of them I, top I, Yeah, I think there. I have Rendon and Bregman really high on my, on my top five. Anyways, team. my biggest problems with this list, you guys – Whoever said Matt Chapman was for it, fuck you. But we've already had yes. this 10 times. Ch- Chapman is not, is not as good not as Ramirez. Ramirez. I don't care. I don't what care. What does he do better? Wait, time out. Okay, time out. Jackson, time out. what the fuck are you thinking with Devers who cannot feel for his life at 10? There are, all right, he's going to stay in Boston, which he can hit well there. Oh, he's going to stay in Boston. Oh, there you go. Boston, yeah. Okay. Boston is, it feels perfect for him. He's got like 200 for hit Boston, seasons. Okay. Like, Boston, he might break like the hit record. You don't know. You don't know. And Rochelle is going to stay in New York where he's perfect there. Wait, I have a question, Jack. Uh, Jack, if th- okay, you're talking as if third base is the most important defensive position in baseball. Yes. Well, no, I'm not actually. I'm, I'm not. It's it's not. To... It's just as important defensively in full season p- a position adjustments on fan graphs as second base. Yes, I know it's not as important. Matt so Chapman, then, why though, are we? I, listen, okay, I'm I'm definitely you know on the overhype with Matt Chapman being a top. Yes, two top you are. Player. 
Yes, I, you I, are. Feel, I think three is a pretty justified position. The reason why I'd no. say there's potential, you, you, people have made the argument, and you can go, people have made legitimate arguments, Max Greenfield included, your boy. Yes, I know. As My Max Chapman is a top three player. Now, do I agree with that? No. Do I think if he can raise his WRC plus to you like can't. the 140 range, it's already 130. If he can raise it to 140, I'm not saying it's likely. I'm not saying it's going to happen. If you can raise it to 140 and he's going to have, you know, 66 DRS, maybe more over three years, then I'd absolutely consider him to, to be a potential top three player. And it's not that, you know, I understand third base isn't the most defensive, you know, it's not the most important, but at the end of the day, in the grand scheme of things, it does matter defensively. And also, then why is DRS, Arianato higher? If the, why he's, is the, he's higher, he's one of the best defensive players in the league. Well, he's not better than, defensive. first of all, he, he's an ounce of average. He's better I'm not looking than, at, you know, I'm, not, I'm looking at combined, well, not combined, but I'm looking at both OAA and DRS in this particular right. instance. Uh, I'm not looking at UZR for inter- infielders, just saying. Um, but as for, for defensive run save, Chapman is plus 26 as opposed to Arenado playing less innings. I'm pretty sure, yeah, he's played less time since 2018. Since 2017, I'm pretty sure it would be pretty similar, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, also, Arenado is a worse hitter than Chapman. Uh, we'll see. You know, and what, I'm, I'm where? not going to count out the fact that he could easily Explain move it. up. He, uh, he is worse. And what's that? He's a worse hitter in pretty much every uh, hitting category. You're going to uh, use X Woba? And weighted runs created plus, right? Two stats that you know are overly harsh on course field. No, I l- l- listen. You gotta let me. Gotta let me. You gotta hear me. Okay, out. go ahead. Yeah, I was here. totally. I was about to say I could easily see Chapman making the. Uh, not excuse me, not Chapman. Arnold making the jump uh, to either four or three, depending on what kind of season he has next year. We'll see, and it's going to be pretty tough to to predict because we haven't really seen star players besides really Larry Walker, you know, come out of course field and 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 be elite. And maybe that's just because there haven't been DJ LeMahieu. Who? Yeah, DJ LeMahieu. DJ LeMahieu, Besides, but that was know, a different. That was also a different situation. Yeah, because also Yankee Stadium, he's the porch. It's not a hitter friendly yeah. ballpark. I'll be very clear about that. But he does have the porch. He's built happen. for that place. He's built for the place. So we'll see how it goes with Arnau and Bush. I'm not going to count out his WRC plus you know, jumping up 20 points and his DRC plus dropping 15 points. It's going to be weird to to see what happens because obviously the core's hangovers a 162 game full season effect, whatever you want to call it. I think Arnau is definitely more in between his his. Uh, Deserve run created plus and uh, weight runs created plus in terms of overall hitting talent. So I, I, I guess we could say about the 128, 130 range. Uh, I think that's pretty fair to say. I still think Chapman's a slightly better hitter, even if you disregard the cores, whatever the cores effect does with WRC plus and you want to, you know, scale that back a bit. Uh, and we'll see, like I said, I, I'll keep reiterating, we'll see how it goes next season. Uh, also, you know, Arenado and Chapman walk pretty much almost at the identical rate. So, like, again, I'll, I'll keep saying it. We'll see what happens next season. Easily see, you know, them switching, making a jump, Chapman making the jump to one, Iron making the jump to one. Uh, but we'll see. I, also, just to clarify, I did have Rendon at one. Miguel Andujar is not top 50. So <laughs> yeah, he is. All yes, he is. yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's top he's, one. He's so good. Never mind. I uh, just don't understand how you can have people between Arenado and Chapman. Yeah, Especially I don't really Ramirez. Like, I don't That's understand why, how Chapman is better than so, Ramirez. It makes no sense. In the grand scheme of things, I have them relatively close to each other, and it doesn't look like that. Just given that I have, on on you know, looking at my list, you know, I did my top 100 list. I had Arnado at 23, and I had Chapman at 11. But I want to like clarify that, and, and I had Ramirez at like 16 or something like that. And Which I, makes I no clarify. sense. Ramirez you know, is significantly better clarify. offensively than Matt Chapman. I'd like to clarify. Exactly. I'd like to clarify. Would you let me clarify? Clarify, because right. you'd still be wrong. Players, pretty much players from. The eight, no, the, the nine position from Chris Sale to like fucking twenty five. Let me check my list real quick. I put them on pretty much the same tier of player, and I know I've said this before. I'm gonna just go back and make sure I have the right players. Yeah, I'd say the players on from from a uh, nine, which is Chris Sale, all the way up to I'd say twenty three with Arenado. I'd say they're all in the same tier of player. And I had zero problem with honestly, any of them could be anywhere. I, I really don't see besides maybe Harper, I'd probably keep Harper in that 22 range, but or 23, 24, wherever you want to put him around there. I, I kind of look back and I kind of regret putting uh, Harper behind in front of Arenado. I probably should put Arenado in front. Uh, but I, I just think any of those guys can be pretty much in the same tier of player, and I'd have no argument. I could see Arenado at 11. Would I complain about it? Likely, but would it be necessarily super wrong? No, like. I don't think he's that good. I think Chapman's still slightly better. I still think Ramirez is better, slightly. But, you know, again, I could see the argument for really anything here. And I think also, in the grand scheme of things with positionless, 
there are so many ways you could go just depending on what you care about more defensively. Offensively, yeah. there's cumulative value in terms of war. And yes, I understand I have somebody between them. But like I said, uh, it's not necessarily, I, I don't want to say it's necessarily such a big discrepancy. I don't want to put like a, a massive gap between them. And it, you know, if you want, you, you consider for me, you could consider Arenado, you know, 16 and Chapman 14. Anywhere around there is fine. I, I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much all I'll say on this because that's my reasoning. And if you don't, you know, like it, that's, that's fair. fair. No, that's fair. Well, I'll say it's it. not. I'm not, right, I'm not so gonna, like right, when he so when he explains it like that. When he explains it like that, I, I can I can I can see his point. It's hard to I don't agree with it. When you guys are like coming at me, you know, five on one. That sounds wrong. But when you guys are coming at me five on <laughs> this, one in a fucking message. Like, well, it's it's, all this it's only hilarious. two of us. Jackson hasn't yeah. said a word. You know, I actually, I'm saying like I'm saying in like a chat. Like let, let's say I'm oh I'm, in the group chat, yeah. And you're you're coming at me like. You that's fucking hilarious, moron. You, you that's, fuck, hilarious. You know, that's absolutely hilarious. Well, no, it's, it's not you fucking moron. It's you fat ginger. That too. Fat ginger, <laughs> whatever. Obviously, not the case anymore, regardless. Uh, <laughs> no, <nah>, but... Uh... <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, is mainly, it's hard to sort of explain in that environment. Uh, and, and I'm just saying, like, it, it could go anywhere from... Uh, you know, Ryan understands. I'm glad Ryan understands. Yeah, no, nah, I, 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 I get his point. I don't agree it with it. That's I have what, a question what, for you. Yeah, what's your question? For Jack. What's your question? How are you going to hate people who overuse x -Woba? I don't hate people who overuse x -Woba. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> I do, too. I don't hate people. I do. I do. You disagree yeah, with them. All right, there's a difference. I strongly between... hate Okay, fine. I, I don't mean hate them. I mean you disagree you know, with them, right? There's a difference between using x -Woba to the point where you're saying Josh Donaldson is better than Nolan Arenado or Matt Chapman, but there's also a point where you could use it. and it's that, that was a subtle shot. He has a be he does have a better nickname. Is does that count? Is that like count? Like yeah, the bringer that, that counts. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Counts. yeah. that counts. But <laughs> what I'm mainly saying is, if you're going to use Xwoba to differentiate a player, to say a player is you know the second best, because the only argument you could use to say Josh Jones is a top three third baseman is Xwoba. We can't even use. Yeah, that. but he. But even I, I then, it makes no play. sense. Yeah. He literally doesn't play. Like doesn't he played ball, 55 yeah. games, then he played 155, yeah, yeah. and then he played 20. Like, I'm he... saying that was the the said person because I am talking about a particular person who uses. Yeah, it. we know. We know. Yeah, who you're no, talking we know. About. Like, well, you guys know what I'm talking about. I, I, I don't. I, I just I, I wouldn't use that argument. And like I said, XO is help. It's helpful to a certain extent. DRC plus is probably better for the same uses that XOBA is, is used for. Depends I on what you do. Graph with to uh, I'll have so I make somebody I can make a graph. Jackson make a graph about what's more predictive over the past three seasons, four seasons, whatever with the dead ball. Let me excuse me about the dead ball, the juice balls. But I uh, I don't have a problem with it. like I still use it a bit. Like I don't I, I still look at it. I, I still consider it a bit. I don't you know sit there and use it as eighty percent of everything. All right. So, Go yeah. down the leaderboard and and you know pick you know Howie Kendrick is like a top ten player because he's like ninety six. Oh, we retired. actually all thought, we all used to think like we when we when we first when he went after that season we used to all think he was like some superstar who's going to come into twenty twenty one just crush. He, he, he was, was really, really good. good in twenty nineteen, yeah, but he's back. also thirty seven years old and played yeah, half a season. We we all kind of overrated back, him, and I'm kind of sad about how I used it because it looks really stupid. Like I'm although back, I I, got, I never like, had him. It's so because I've because I never liked Exwell. I've obviously documented everything. I, I pretty much document everything. That I post it. I, I don't like what I was doing back then. You know, I didn't really understand that you can't use it for over like, you know, 15%, 20% at most of things. If you're going to look at player evaluations uh, and DRC plus is better. So that's all I'll say about that. Anybody else have any other complaints? But other well, well uh, you, you yeah. cut me off there, but I had a question that was relating to that. Without using anything that has to do with trash cans cheating whatever yeah, yeah. or exoba let's go That's explain how alex bregman with a 10 10 point higher wrc plus since 2018 that's not weighted but uh whatever and oh an extra what another win 1.2 wins is worse than anthony rendon okay i also so want jackson to get on this because i think this jackson where, also had him above yeah jackson probably has a bit of a different reason but this is where no i, I didn't consider trash cans at all this is where bang, I do bang. consider uh -huh, hilarious. Of, yeah, funny, funny, bang, bang, whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is where, first of all, on my top 10 list, I had Bregman at six and Rendo at four. Again, another place you could put them, you know, anywhere in between. Uh, well, I would have Bregman at three and Rendon at four. That's, but... that's fine. That's fine. That's, that's... That, that works. I, I don't really care. That, I, that works for me. This yeah, is another really place good. where expected where, where DRC plus Xwoba, they come into play. Yes, I do understand Xwoba kind of fucks up 
Bregman a bit because of the Crawford boxes, and that's you know what is and his astronomically high pull percentage that he and does on purpose. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty much it's a happened. weird, it's a weird. Yeah, it's, thing. It's, weird. it's all fucked up, but it, it is useful for some things, and I do consider them again to be interchangeable. Uh, obviously, Bregman's a bit of a better defender, uh, but I'd say they're pretty similar. There's not too much of a big gap. There is a nine defensive run save big gap over the the get not big gap. There's a nine DRS uh, over the past. Uh, what is it? Two seasons, three seasons, three, two and a half three. seasons, three and a quarter seasons, yeah. whatever you want to call it, uh, with Rendon, and then Rendon leads in uh, UZR by ten again. UZR not the greatest. Dumb really. stat. It's yeah. not dumb. It's just not the. It's not it's good for not... infielders. It's better for outfielders. Yeah. Also, you got to consider. You know, if you care a bit about recency bias, um, Rendon was significantly better than Bregman in 2020. Uh, yeah, but in twenty nineteen, yeah, but, but, but in twenty nine, but in twenty nineteen, yeah. which you'd probably in a recency bias, like you'd use that in a way well, higher because. Oh, Bregman was an MVP candidate. In if it wasn't for yeah, Mike Trout being, being, yeah, if it wasn't for Mike Trout being like the greatest baseball player of our what generation, was, was it, Bregman, he Bregman had a one sixty nine WRC plus nice. and uh-huh. an eight point five WAR. <laughs> in, Let me see what Rendon had real quick. And, Rendon and had the like S- F WAR. Rendon had a seven F WAR with a one fifty four. Yeah, I think well, Rendon's really good though. Rendon is. I'm yeah, not gonna say that. Oh, and and that's with F4, which likes Rendon's defense more than DRS or yeah, o- I also, OAA. But I also I also think that going forward, the reason why I say recency bias matters in terms of 2020 is because it does help a bit with projections, and I do think Rendon projects to be a bit better going forward. Uh, Didn't Bregman because, get hurt though this year? Bregman only Bregman only not, played yeah, yeah, 42 games. Like I said, I, I'm good either way with either of them being one or two. And I never really considered that argument what you're making. And I'm not going to switch them because I do think Rendon is still better slightly. Um, but like I said, I have zero problem with them being, you know, interchangeable. And I think that, that happens with a, a lot of people take lists like, you know, you have two players back to back and, you know, or maybe one one difference, a spot between them. And there's such a small spot at the end of the day that they could be either way. It, it goes with top 100. It's like Cole DeGrom. Yeah. yeah I think there should be more tiers. The same like Cole and DeGrom are on the same can, tier. Yeah, I think yeah. I think tiers do a little bit more justice than actual rankings because no one's gonna put one A, one B, one C. Right, and then yeah. but like and then Ramirez, Chapman, and Arenado, I think are like your second tier. Yeah. I think Turner would be much higher if he wasn't as injury prone. Like he just doesn't have the sample size at either of the He's other two older. guys. Yeah, He's, there's that. He's got. Just, he has a lot of injury issues, so and he I, has no teams. That's fun too. Yeah, that hurts. No, he does. Do it, do, it doesn't hurt, but you don't know where he's going to be playing, so you don't know I how know. that's going to affect him. I have inside Let's information. Let me just check my source right now. Dude, no, what's I want to know who the David sources? I want to know who it is. I'm so bad. He got. He got absolutely ratio. I want to know who it is. He actually have sources. Yeah. I'm so lost. Yeah. What is it? How? I think he just DMs people on Twitter and asks. Yeah, I think no, I think he gets because like you really just have to talk to people who because like I was the I DM'd Brian Ho, uh, Hulk once. Hoax is it Hoax or Hulk? Hulk, Hulk, right? Something like that, right? Um, I DM'd like, a Yankees like, writer. Beat yeah, writer? I once I, I, I asked him about Brad Peacock once, uh, and then I was like, "Yo, how do you even get like information?" He's like, "Do you like talk to agents or something?" He's like, "Something along those lines." He'd obviously didn't go into depth with it, but uh, it's I'm pretty sure like. Age, I mean, agents are going to obviously want to disclose that information so that they can like drive up the price. Like, right. hey, look, you know this. And, and sometimes I think that's why some reporters get misled because they're like, yo, this team is in on this guy to try to drive up the market from the agent. And the reporter reports it. And then it comes out to be not to not be true. So, yeah, but that's that for some reason, it only happens to Bob Nightingale. But I don't think it just happened like Heyman. Heyman I reported, so I think. Bob, Bob doesn't deserve a job, but I feel bad he for doesn't. him. <laughs> I also like what what do uh, people that aren't agents get out of it like giving information like do they get anything they get money because they yeah can, like people in the front office that like I'm, no I'm pretty oh, sure no, the agent leak it? well the front office yeah. is leaking stuff on purpose too I I was I listening to some to I think it was Michael Lombardi on the McAfee show and he was talking about that I know it's a different sport but Similar, similar they, concept, though. But similar concept. They leak information to try and drive down the price on players or drive up the price on players to see what they can manipulate the market. But I like I how think, the Celtics just said, fuck it, and we're just going to leak it ourselves now. They just only report their own news. And then on I mean, top, like... That's I, probably I think, the, how they ended up getting Kemba Walker from the Hornets, and he sucks. Yeah. And then they give Gordon suck. Hayward to the Hornets, and and he drops, God. what, 30? I'm, I'm all right. Capital riots. 
He was one thing when he was there. He was like, I was gonna bring no. up like he went off. A, that day. He went off. All right, a, all right, back to baseball. When a player gets <laughs> injured, like a Mike, like not Mike Talk, pa- James Paxton. Like the fact that the Yankees don't want to sign him is probably why his price, like no one wants to give him that much money. Because if the Yankees don't want to bring him back and they're the team he was just with and they probably have the most information on him, no one else is gonna give him a, a, that big of a contract. So they're all just gonna wait. A negotiation until thing where they want to drive down Paxton's price and the I really think back. I hope so, you know. This happened with DJ too, where like the Yankees were not gonna budge on a price, and no other team was gonna budge because the Yankees didn't want to do it either. I think it's gonna happen with Gardner too, where like no one's gonna want to sign Gardner and Gardner's gonna be like yo just give me a contract man and the Yankees I love me I love Brian Cashman other than the fact he left me on on red but the Dodgers do I think the Dodgers are doing this with Turner too no one's gonna give him the contract Turner wants and Turner's gonna end up going back to the Dodgers like I joke about him being a brewer but something like that's gonna happen unless the Mets just go and like just you know because they have gobs of money and a lot of money to use right now they go hey you got the, wanna... the Mets do what they want yeah hey, hey you want he's uh, not a big upgrade million? over JD Davis Yes, he is. Yes, he is. It's not like a massive hey, upgrade. Wait, yeah. but it's a, ma- it's a massive it's, upgrade. It's going from, but it might be going from Justin Tur- JD Davis to Justin Turner, and then trading JD Davis for a valuable asset. So that might also be it. But I'm confused it's, because it's, they it's said a massive they, upgrade. They, Davis has a 136 way run created plus. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, but, but he, he can't, can't play defense. defense. Do you guys but, have any other uh, issues with anybody else's list? Yeah, besides, yeah, Devers, yeah. Moncada. Moncada. Besides, Where the hell is Moncada? Besides Moncada, he. I put Moncada at nine. Why is he top ten? He's not yeah. better than Gio Urshela. He, he he's had the production. I mean, it's probably when, unsustainable. He's, he's, he's had the four oh six bad. Wait, 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 yeah. Let's not jump on him. Let's not jump on him. It's Go probably on. unsustainable. Let's start on. Hold on. Hold on. Can we have, have this same energy when you're talking to me? No. 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 Because because Jackson deserves it. Yeah. How many times? How many times? How many times? All right. How many times has Jackson aired me in the group chat? None. Whenever I ask him a question, he gives me an answer. What are you when talking question, about? No, this when you ask like me a question, a... when you ask me a question, you go go to the comment section. Like when I ask Jack, if I ask Jackson, I was right here right now. No, if I ask Jackson, if I ask Jackson, that's Jackson. Cool. With it. <laughs> if, if I if I had it, if I, if I ask Jackson, Jackson, look, should I amputate my arm? He's gonna give me an honest answer. You're gonna say like the comment me, section. Go to Google, bro. I give me an honest answer. No, no, no. You'd be like, go to Google, bro. Go to, go to the comment section. Jackson would give me an honest, in-depth answer on whether I should amputate my arm or not. So, like, because of all that, right. Right. everyone, okay. no one, jump on Jackson. Here, Jackson, go ahead, and speak. Well, Urshela, I mean, he, besides 2019, he's just like he's he just had nothing before that. That's my problem. And Moncada was he good before that? But he's a top prospect. Yeah, he he yes. had the minor league numbers and like the the previous like. Acumen. Okay, but but Urshela was on, or at least swore multiple as multiple teams. Where and, he was like Urshela had the worst twenty nineteen. Urshela was also a way better. Defender. That's fair. Yeah, but Urshela mm-hmm. didn't have a four hundred six BABIP in twenty nineteen. I'm saying it's probably unsustainable. But right, but productive. I was gonna bring up like Suarez or Brian. Both of those guys. Would, but why weren't they? Brian's probably eleven or twelve for me. Uh, Brian just. I don't know his 2020. Scares what was the Devers ranking? Hey, okay, his 2020 scares you, but he had the same war as Devers in half the plate appearances. And didn't with, Wakata stink this with, year too? Yeah, but I think he, he got he COVID, COVID. So he, he got, got COVID. Though, COVID so I think it's a little pass. different. Yeah, that's different. Um, well, Brian, Brian, Brian got like COVID. strikeout. Yeah, but strikeout DJ Lady like sucked. Flew up. DJ yeah. Lady also got it in the beginning of the Bri- season. Brian also only played 34 games. It's 34 games. And he was off to a horrible start in 2019, too. He did the same thing. That's and obviously, And obviously wouldn't know that as well as I would because it's well documented within the Cubs fan base because because people hate him for no reason. As an honorary but, Cubs fan, you know, I, I remember it. But Oh, yeah, I remember it. Honorary <laughs> Cubs fan. But, but, but Devers and Brian last year, if you want to talk about how 2020 is concerning – uh devers had a 109 wrc plus bryant had 77 devers had 101 more plate appearances and they had the same more devers is just so bad defensively that you that's well he had a good 2019 defensively but i wonder what, what that was because he doesn't even play next to a good defensive shortstop ever like his OAA was pretty good best defender in 2020 at the catch position mm-hmm. besides austin hedges of course <laughs> hedges no wait no, no, you all said, right you said all right but Revise is the best defender catcher in 2020. Okay. Yeah, what but Austin Hedges is, what? He, no, no, he's saying point. that it's there's flukes that can happen yeah, because like, well, yeah. yeah, no, I because Revise is one of the worst defensive catchers in the league. But that was also 2020 compared to 2019, when 2019 was a really good defensive player. I don't know what happened with Devers in 2019. I guess his defense was pretty good. 
I well, still his his him. contact percentage in the zone went up eight percent, which helps. And his defensive no, run saved went up per a lot. thirteen fifty innings yeah, got went a ton up. Like his I don't know. If if you if you scale his 2020 to his 2019, I'm just doing math in my head, so it's probably wrong. But about Super negative eight, James. negative this eight, is- negative 18 defensive run saves per 130, uh, not 135 innings, 1350 innings, and negative 18 UZR. This gives me major Gary Sanchez's framing in 2018 vibes. When Gary Sanchez randomly was like, was a good framer, and then he just sucked that framing for them. Yeah, in 2018, he was a good framer. And in 2019, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, he's mediocre. 2021, he's elite. No, I'm just saying, like, it was so weird out of the blue. Like, he has his worst offensive season. Everyone wants him gone, but he's somehow framing at his best level. Like, it gives off that type of vibe where it's going to be a randomly good defensive season that had no – that no one – Who's Devers, 2019? Yeah, Devers is 2019. I don't know if that's – Yeah, but he wasn't even that good. Like, he still had a negative 10 defensive run saved. Wow, really? I, I thought his outs of average were good, though. I'm pretty sure they were. Maybe. Kids. Yeah. The, it, Anyways, man. nothing uh, about that says good defender to me. Can somebody add up the the, the points to be? Uh, oh yeah, uh, I did. Right. Jackson so, did. I expect Anduha to be number one. No, All right, right. I'll Duha. start at number one again, just because it's. Well, Bregman and Rendon will be tied, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's one. It's tied in first with Bregman and Rendon, and then at third is, Ju- not just Jose Ramirez, Aaron with thirty-one Judge. points. And uh, Rendon and Bregman at 38 apiece. In fourth, we have Matt Chapman with 28. That's fair. Fifth, Noah and Arenado with 25. That's, That's my top five. In, order. in sixth, we have Justin Turner with 20. That also matches mine. In seventh, we have Manny Machado with 15. Cool. In eighth, we have Josh Donaldson with 13. Good. Ninth is Chris Bryant. Oh, that cool. With six. And in tenth, we have Gio Urshaw. That's exactly my list. I'm it's hungry. literally my exact list. I feel like I overrated the Suarez a lot, and I didn't even I didn't really consider Geo to be number ten or number nine. Is that bad? Uh, Suarez is not that good. Like he can he's hit, though. He just had one he, bad he, offensive he, season. He's home, he's uh, he's good, but he's a little bit overrated. I, I mean, yeah, probably, but I, I don't know. He feel I feel like I I, I should have made I, I maybe now looking back on it, I might have considered switching him with Urshela because I feel like Urshela and him are very similar baseball players, very similar. Uh, anybody who thinks that Suarez is and I, I've I'm, I'm just saying this because I've seen this a lot is better than Bryant. That's wrong. crazy. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. Yeah, I agree. You know. Anyways, that concludes our top ten third baseman. Let us know if you agree with us, uh, or with me in particular, because mine is the best list by far. Uh, yeah. so I'm sure. At Deep Drive Pod on Instagram and uh, Twitter. Well, that's it. All right. You Moving can... to our next segment of today's uh, podcast, we have trivia. I'm beating Ryan by a lot, and I won't go with the lead. So, James, take it away. Upside down, James. What's the trivia? All right. So... For okay, so the lead in the score, I can check. I sent it in our Instagram chat. I think it's twenty to nine, Jack. I think it's twenty to nine, Jack leads. Yeah, let's get it. Yeah, twenty to nine, Jack. Okay, so in that case, we'll start with Ryan. Let's go. Actually, no, I have Jack on top. We'll start with Jack. Uh, Willie Mays played twenty-two MLB seasons. How many All Star appearances did he make? That's an easy question. How many? 21. No. 22. Also, no. It's 20. It's 24. What? Uh, well, there was the two seasons, like the three seasons. It was four, it was four seasons. It was I like 1958. Tonight. Oh, okay. Well, it's because wait, 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 Jackson wait, gave it to me last, and I had medium and hard filled out. So wait, no, tell me, wait, wait, wait. I have a question. How, wait, how did he have twenty four? I, I didn't. Because in fifty eight through sixty one years, nineteen fifty eight through sixty one, they had two All Star games. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, ja- Jackson told me to do with Hank Aaron, but I feel like we've had a couple of Hank Aaron questions, so I went with one. Yeah, I need the Hank Aaron one too. But all right, Ryan, you're Ryan's doing. easy question is. Which Hall of Famer was the oldest rookie in baseball history and MLB history? Oh, Satchel Page. Okay. 
twenty to ten. That's, that's such really a, easy. That's that was a layup. That was a lay. That was so easy. And my okay. Was- well, yours yours was hard, but I was gonna make it something White Sox related. So be happy. I don't uh, know. <laughs> the, the, the Chicago baseball team. That's what we're calling them. 2021, the White Sox. Yeah. No, I was, it was it's about 2005. But who I is the? This, what? I say this as if I don't have the White Sox going to the ALCS this year. Yeah, they're not going to be the Astros, but that's besides the point. No, who I is the know. Who is the only Chinese-born active MLB player? For Jack, yeah. Chinese-born. Now I'm going to be very racist by names. <laughs> Japanese yeah, player. this wow. is this is a trap. This is a trap. Did, did, I, did I like mention him before? What do you mean? This we were like talking before about the guy the Red Sox just signed. Oh no, that dude, that racist. dude is Japanese, and I even said that. No, oh, oh, do, you, do we do we do we want to bring this back? How I pronounce the name, and then you're like, yeah, because you're Japanese, and I'm not. Right, is it is it <laughs> who? John Yamaguchi. No, he's also Japanese. Yeah, Anything with, no. like, those, like, s- w- w- syllables that are, like... Okay, you know, I'm not going to explain the Japanese right, language, cool. but... I don't want to answer. I, I feel like no, I, I... I... Okay, don't answer. No, no, gonna, I'm going to answer. Gonna call, no, I'm going to call both of you racists after this. <laughs> okay, you know what? No, 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 no. I'm going to do it. You know what? We're going we're gonna to do a layup here. We're going to do an obvious guy, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Josh Taylor. I'm not giving you. I'm not gonna be a racist. No, do not racist. It's not him. him but... It's not him. But my original thought was Sue Lin. It's not him. Is it Yoshi Hirano? He's t- no. Okay, again, Japanese guys. The Japanese language is so distinct versus Chinese and Korean. <laughs> it is. But, right, but 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 I thought it was Sue Lin. He's Taiwanese. There's some political stuff there. I'm not gonna get into that, but. Um, it is Austin Bryce of the oh LA Braves, God, I believe. I, I do remember that. No, is he? No, that's not the guy on the Braves. I don't even know what team this motherfucker is. No, he's on. on the Marlins, Marlins, right? He's on the Red Sox. Yeah, yeah he's I, on the Red Sox. So, so you guessed Josh the wrong Taylor. Red Sox reliever. Yeah, yeah, but like he, I wasn't he, gonna. He was born in Hong Kong. Yeah, but I wasn't gonna be like racist. So Which I said Josh? Taylor. Oh, and if and if we want if we want to be technical here, in 1992, Hong Kong wasn't part of China, Jackson, but it is what it is. Um, Ryan's medium. Okay, I can say I'm. Ryan's biased. medium is what player led the league in fastball whiff percentage in 2020? Oh, Jacob Degrom. No, it's Austin what? Price. <laughs> Dude, what? what? Oh, oh, did I fuck that fair. up? That's I should. I should. I, I was about to ask Jack. Huh? Jack, Wait, did you hear what like, I said? I lose a, I lose a, a, a thing. You gotta give me another question now. Wait, but time out. You didn't even time out. Time All right, out, time you out. know what? Then I'll I'll give him the White Sox question. I was really gonna give him. All right. Do I get a shot at this? No, right? No, because no. I fucked that up. Uh, no. Who was the manager of the 2005 White Sox that won the World Series? So easy, dude. I don't know White Sox history. I hate. Uh-huh. How do you not know this? Jackson that Jackson said this wasn't an easy question. You're lucky I didn't make this an easy question then. Dude, was it, I, it like, I won't get points, but I'll guess uh, it. Was it fucking Jack? <laughs> I want to guess somebody. I think you might have been dead or retired by the <laughs> Say it. Say it, uh, no balls. Say it. No balls. Apparently he has no balls. Bobby Valentine. <laughs> Is no. it Ozzy Guillen? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. How was I supposed to know that? It was so easy. He's one That's of the your most favorite team. Players. He's literally one of the most famous <laughs> managers in White Sox history. We got the I notable homophobe, right? History. Okay, but, notable, but, but, but there were also plenty of White Sox fans who wanted him to be their manager instead of Larusa this year. Yeah, so. dude. Ozzy Guillen's literally on the uh, broadcast, not the broadcast, but on the, on, like, on the MLB network or something. No, he's on the, no, no, on the end. I don't know what channel they do it on, but it's uh, the post You mean the White Sox? Yeah. That's all CSN shit. Yeah, no, they, like I know NBC he's on Sports. there. Yeah, I know he's I don't on know there. What it's called Frank anymore. Thomas. The only reason I know he's on right. there is because not only did he call it Nick Swisher there, but he also had the audacity to say James McCann should stay because he should platoon with Grandel because Grandel. You know what, Jack? Player. Jack ended up with an easier question because there's no way you were gonna get that Austin Bryce led the league in fastball with percentage. Yeah, in that's. You also didn't name that. Is he, he's not even a starting pitcher, so does he even qualify? Well, he led the league in fastball with percentage. 
I don't There's know. Jackson, up there? J- Jackson told me that, so I have no idea. Let me. Let me actually, I'm gonna Google this. Hold on, because I, I feel yeah, like I the price of like fifty percent. Okay, just go ahead. All right, Jack. All right. The Boston Americans won the first World Series in 1903. Who won the 1904 World Series? Uh, the New York at the end of the days. <laughs> the New York Highlanders. Highlanders. Highland, sure. Highland, Highlanders. That was their name before the Yankees. I thought it was the New York Americans before or something. No, like I'm pretty sure it was the Baltimore Highlanders, right? No. Well, it it, it was oh, it was not. He played for Baltimore and he played for the Highlanders. I thought it was New York. What? It was not the New York. Yeah, they didn't Highlanders. even win it. I'll have a guess. Was it the Pittsburgh Pirates? No. Oh, okay. I can say it now, right? Yeah, go ahead. There was no 1904 World Series. Why? Oh, okay. And 1905 was the New York Giants. So you oh, guys wouldn't have had that. 1904 World Series. World Series. I have no idea. But the yeah. first one, they had one in 1903, and that was the first one, and then they didn't have one the year after. That okay. Makes sense. okay. Ryan. How many AL teams have never made an ALCS appearance in the 21st century? 21st name, century. Name them. Time out. What counts as the 21st century? 2001 to 2020? 2001 or 2000. I mean, 2000 and 2001 was the same team, so it doesn't matter. But or okay, at least yeah. one of them. But yeah. You uh, yeah, the Yankees were both went to the ALCS in 2000 and 2001. And Mariners and, and, and so did the Mariners 2000 yeah. and 2001, I yeah, think. Yeah, Yankees, <laughs> Yankees beat a 116 win team that year. Um, maybe 2000 was the Mariners. I'm not sure, but I don't think it was the Mariners that year. No, it was. It was. No, no, it was because the Yankees. I remember the Gary Sheffield home. The Sheffield. Yeah, home it run. was. It was because yeah, he hits a home run. No, David Justice hits a home run. And yeah, just was Justice was the ALCS MVP that year. Yeah, but he hits that's, a home run. So that's no. not the question. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, um, how no many ALCS appearances? A- no ALCS appearances, and then you have to name them. Okay, it's not any team from the AL East. Um, it's not the White Sox. It's not the Indians. It's the Twins. It's the uh, it's the twins. The um, I'm remembering this. Trying to get this wrong. But... Twins, uh, athlet, athletic. No, wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Twins. A's are one of those teams. The A's did not make the ALCS in 2002. Um, it's the twins, and it's the twi- twins. The A- are you gonna stop me after I get all of them, or are you just gonna? No, you're gonna have to like say that that is your guess. Okay, is these teams. It's the Twins and the A's. Is that AL, your final you guess? You said AL. American Every League. AL team that has never made the ALCS. And, no, the Astros were in the NL before, so not to worry about any switches. Uh, well, the, the Astros that... also made it, like, yeah, literally no, last season. But... Uh, so, again, Indians made it. Uh, Royals made it. Tigers made it. Uh, White Sox made it because they won the World Series. Um, all the AL East have made it. Uh, and then everyone except for the uh, A's, I believe, have made it. So the is it the A's and the Twins? No. Oh fuck! All right, the Twins are definitely a team that hasn't made it. Um, Angels won the World Series. Uh, two thousand two, they beat the Giants. Ryan, were the Expos in the AL or the NL? They were in the NL because they immediately yeah. became the Nationals. Oh, I forgot about that. Twins. I'm, I'm not Athletics. missing anyone. Athletics definitely made it now that I'm thinking about it. They had to make it at some point. Um, Didn't they not make it past like the wild card for like on who? The yes for Mad Long? Who? Yes, made it. Who, Ryan? Well, no, the A's. I don't think the Orioles made it. Dude, I don't think the Orioles made it. Rays made it. Yankees made it. Orioles, Orioles, Orioles. Did they make it? <gasps> I don't think the Orioles made it. What's that? I don't think the Orioles made it. Ryan just realized something. Twins, Orioles, I guess. And did the Orioles make it? They made it. was a Delman Young hit. All right, let's hustle up now. <laughs> yeah, let's hurry up. No, the Delman Young hit, so they did make it. Sorry. Twins, uh, and then ALLL. Whole Central made it, I think. Yeah, Whole Central made it. I'm and I didn't give teams. you a number. It could be any number of teams. I'm going to say it's the Twins. Just the Twins. All right. All right. 
so first of all, the Orioles made it in 2014. Yeah, the Dominion Young hit. That's what I was saying. I just said just the Twins. The A's made it in 2002. No, they didn't. Uh, no, no, remember, no, no, no. Did you the watch A's, the end of Moneyball? The A's made it in 2006. Happened? Do you remember what happened the end face, of Moneyball? Yeah. They when lost. the A's played the Twins and the they ALDS. lost to the Twins. Oh, the Twins won, yeah. you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was no. So, so every single AL team has made it to the ALCS since 2000. And I don't know 2000. why I just auto-assumed the Twins haven't. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Well, it's because it's because they haven't won a playoff game since since then. Well, okay. First off, Jack, you could just like not go on based on my opinion because you knew the A's made no, it. I, I'm, I'm All right. So I know I fucked up the Bryce thing, but the theme here was supposed to be that they were all trick questions. Funny. That's uh-huh. fair. And and then I, I fucked right. up the th- and then I fucked up the answer that was supposed to be two different guys, but or two a two of the same guy, but did did Jack get any of them? Jack winning by ten, so just like Jack did you got, get an answer the question? Jack got zero points. I you only Ryan got, got one. one, so it's two. It's twenty to ten. Are you gonna thank your family? Thank God. And uh, I want, no, no, I'm not gonna thank my. I'm not gonna thank them today. I'm gonna thank. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna thank. Um, I'm going to thank Ozzy Guillen for managing the White Sox in 2000. Well, you don't get and... points for that. No, Shh. don't worry. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to thank, uh, you know, Jack for not knowing anything about the White right, Sox. Let's wrap it up here. Um, Thanks for watching the trivia. No, no. The I need to thank my family. I need to thank my parents. I need to thank God. Um, I, I did the transition. I'm thanking Nolan Arenado for being uh, better than Matt Chapman. Arenado. <laughs> Arenado. Go, go, go. Just go. My bad. Thanks, everyone, for watching. This is episode six of the Deep Drive in the Left Field podcast. If you like what you saw, we have a five-star rating. Go follow us on socials at deep underscore drive underscore pod. Uh, follow Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Garcia ESM. Follow me on Instagram at MLB Nerds. Uh, follow, subscribe to Ryan's YouTube, Yankee Stat Talk. And it's yeah. been a Deep Drive in the Left Field by Castellanos, and we will see you next time. We're gone. Yeah.